Hello, in this video I'll show you the add-ons for NAJ3 Max, like this NAJ H20 Precise Z Height Adjuster, KF8 and AF8 Metal Air Assist and Belt Tangeners. If you buy NAJ3 Max today you'll get all these accessories with the machine, but if you got one of first version like I do, you can buy and mount these accessories anytime. Let's start with Z-axis Height Adjuster. On first view this add-on seems quite expensive, but right after unbox you can see why. It's made completely out of aluminium and steel and it's super precise. Into package we get pre-assembled height adjuster, tool and two plastic washers. As usual I try to disassemble lifting device before even try to use for the first time. Laser model got no resistance during work like Mil does, so this lifting device can be made super simply, but Neji take this part seriously and make strong, precise, nicely running lifting device. When I disassembled them I found a lot of grease and many treats and screws all around. We can see here that the laser model clamp got dovetail groove to slide up and down on the base plate, and between them is dovetail washer, so we can set backlash by tightening side screws. This is same concept like some mini lathe got on their rails. With proper settings of screw you can get nicely running without any backlash. On main screw for setting height is also a spring which determinates screw backlash. And from side we got 3 knobs, 2 is for fixing the laser model and 3rd is for fixing set at height. Let's mount it on machine now. Firstly take off the laser model and remove the old acrylic plate with laser clamp by removing front 2 nuts on upper wheel axis and unscrew lower screw from back side. For access to that screw we need to unscrew chain rail on one side. Then just screw back on new aluminium lifting device and make sure it is parallel with back plate when tightening all the screw, otherwise set it with lower screw which isn't fully tightened. Lifting device is now ready to use, other clamp got only one screw to tie the laser model, but that lifting device got two knobs which grab the laser model when tied them. Concepts seen worst, but actually need much less force than an old clamp to attach the laser more solid. Lifting device got 20mm of setting range, but we can also set position of a laser model while clamping for 25mm, so we can set laser height for 45mm, which means from 50 to 95mm measured from bottom to a laser heatsink. So minimal height is about 50mm, because it's meant that we use honeycomb panel to get about extra 20mm, so minimal height will be 30mm, which is good distance to set focus. But if you still want different height of a laser model you can fix the model on the edge of clamp, that means that you fix the model with only one knob, but don't worry I try to work on that way and the single knob will hold the laser model easily. On that way we can set the model almost from 0 up to 150mm height. Setting focus distance will be much easier now. Lifting device works great without any backlash. Lifting screw got M4 treat, that means that full turn of knob will lift laser for 0.7mm, so precise setting won't be a problem anymore. Entire lifting device is about 90 gram heavier than old acrylic one, so it may get some effect on acceleration speed, but as always notice, fast working won't bring good quality of engrave. And yeah, there's one more thing, they had two screws also on wheel shaft hole so we can precisely set the wheel tightness by these two screws, but need to lose nuts on the other side before. And then we got here belt tensioners, in the package we got 3 pre-assembled belt tensioner with needed screw, tools and 3 meter of GT2 belt. Belt tensioners are made out of aluminium except the pulley which is plastic. Tensioners are nicely machined with chamfered edges and everything is fit perfect. To mount the tensioners we need to disassemble them firstly. Then remove boot screws from the front leg and mount tensioner housing on its place with attached screws. When I remove the old belt it seemed like a good time to make a rail cleaning with alcohol and towel. Don't forget to do that here and there so the wheels run without resist. Then insert one end of a belt into tensioner and mount the pulley to its place. Then fix the tiny part to end of a belt. I leave about 1mm of belt out. And screw it just that much that the screw hold it. Then manage the belt via wheels and motor pull it to other end. Cut it to proper length and tight it with screw. 
That's it, now all we need to do is to tension the belt. Before we can tension only for each tooth, which is about 2.4mm, and that can mean from loosened to super tension belt. With new tensioners we can set belt tension stepless with a screw. To get right tension I block the motor pulley and then set the screw until there's no movement on the axis. That's it, now all I need to do is repeat that process on other two axes. It's not a big mode, but we can set machine to work more precise and I'm quite sure that it saves some broken belt. And then we got here aluminium air assist nozzle for 30 and 40 watt laser model. In the package we got metal nozzle with rotatable quick coupling, screws for mounting, seal, 2 meter of 4 by 2 mm tube and coupling from 4 to 8 mm. Mounting is super simply. Firstly I tried to install a 30 watt laser which got settable focus, but after install that nozzle lens can't be excited anymore, so set your favorite focal length and remove the front protective shield. Then put seal under the lens, install nozzle and secure it with screws. Laser is now ready to use with new air assist kit. I just make some quick tests and laser didn't seem so powerful to me, but I mostly use 40 watt model. So I install air assist also on 40 watt model to see the effect. This air assist is good for the lens because lens is constantly under pressure so there's no way for the dust to come close to lens. But also when using this type of air assist, air filter is recommended to remove oil and water from air because if oil or water from the air come to lens, laser could damage them quickly. I was doubting that air assist size first too, and unfortunately was right. Also 40 watt model wasn't that powerful to cut with that type of air assist. That's because whole of that air assist is 3 mm big, which means that lot of air spread around before it come to cutting area. If we use so called manual controlled air assist we bring air close to cutting area and the hole in the tube is only 0.8 mm, so compressed air come out of tube with big pressure direct into cutting line. If you want bigger effect with metal air assist, we need bunch of compressed air to get effect in cutting groove. Also this photo from Neji said to lose low pressure pump with high air flow with that type of air assist, while with manual air assist we need compressor with high pressure and low air flow capacity. I also try to make tube extension to bring compressed air closer to cutting line, but still get better result with Neji manual air assist. So my opinion is that metal air assist is great for engraving, so it protect lens from the dust. But for cutting, manual air assist, so MF type is the key, because it blow high pressure air direct into cutting line and clean them much more efficient than metal air assist. That's pretty much it about add-ons, but during editing this video I got another package from Neji and decided to put in that video another add-on. It is Neji Air 10 additional heatsink for A4640 laser model. Neji A4640 is most powerful Neji laser model, but got one issue, its peak power can reach more than 12 watt. So if you want to use this model in long term cutting, Neji and many users advise to use it on 80-90% to laser power maximum. Otherwise lifetime of the diode can be shortened. With using this add-on model should be cooler and allowed to run with 100% of laser power even in long term use. In the package we find CNC machined aluminium heatsink, cooling fan, plastic washer for the model, thermal paste screws, tools and if we choose that options we got also soldering iron with fine tip and about a meter of soldering wire. Before I mount this heatsink I'll do some tests. So I'll engrave with 100% laser power for about 18 minutes. Highest temp of the core was 39.5 degrees Celsius or 32 degrees Celsius measured on hottest spot of housing. Mounting this heatsink is piece of cake if you're good with soldering iron, but in any case Nature advised to take the video of upgrading if anything go wrong in case of warranty. Firstly unplug and remove the laser model, then unscrew the main fan off. I also got the warranty sticker off without damage them. Fan doesn't have a connector, but it's directly soldered to a laser PCB, so you can't remove the red plastic washer without the soldering fan wires. But if you look closely we notice that the fan wires are soldered from below of PCB, but if you want to remove that PCB we need to unsolder 4 pin which go to another PCB inside of a laser. 
Work smart, not hard, they said, so instead of unsolder these four pins, I'll try to unsolder fan wires from backside. For that job, I'll try to use an attached soldering iron, which don't even look bad. Soldering tip is very fine, just great for that job. From backside, we plug 12 volt power supply from Nature Engraver and we are ready to go. Firstly, I peel a piece of insulation from the wire so the heat transfer easier. Then just add a bit of solder wire, remove both wires and clean the holes. Now remove the old plastic washer and replace it with new one which got groove for new fan cable. Then remove upper four screws on model heatsink, make sure that surface is clean and apply thermal paste on front of laser model. Then put heatsink on and evenly tight screws. If there is some thermal paste come out, wipe them and then screw the fan on new heatsink. Wires of small fan are quite short, so I take them out of fan hook to get some length. Now all we need to do is solder both fan wires together on the PCB. Just don't forget to put plastic washer on before solder. When both wires are soldered, I check if there is no short between and then screw back on the main fan and another modification is done and ready to test. Also after this upgrade we can use both type of air assist. I think laser model after this modification look even better, but what about the effect of that tiny cooler? I make exact same engrave. And after 18 minutes of engraving I can see that the temperature is 1.6 degrees Celsius lower than before and also housing is about 1 degree cooler. Boot fans are controlled by the temperature, so they run with lower RPM and produce less noise than the only one fan before. After all I think it's a great modification. If it lower temperature at 40 degree I'm sure it lower than even more efficient at 50 degree and all of us to run the model with all the power it offers. That's it for today. I installed 4 add-ons on NAG3 Max. Best upgrade is definitely lifting device, but also a tensioner and cooler are great add-on to engraver. But the best part is that if you buy engraver now you got all the add-ons except the cooler with the machine for same price. For more info and order links check below in the video description. Thanks for watching, like, share and subscribe if you like and see you next time.